Welcome to another video from Mishmash Labs. Today we're connecting a MAX31855 thermocouple amplifier to an Arduino Uno and display the information on an LCD. In previous videos we've connected the MAX31855 amplifier board to an Arduino and we've connected an LCD to an Arduino, displaying various random pieces of information in many different ways. If you are going to attempt this tutorial, I recommend you watch both those videos before giving it a go. Check out the links here or in the description. So let's get started. First, place your MAX31855 breakout board into the breadboard with the LCD. Keep the distance between this board and the Arduino short as it uses SPI and interference may occur. Only five jumper cables are required. First we connect ground to the ground bus on the breadboard, which is connected back to the ground on the Arduino. This is followed by the VCC pin, which can take either 3.3 or 5 volts. We're going to wire it back to the power bus on the breadboard, which is connected to the 5 volt power supply pin on the Arduino. You can connect these to any three digital pins on the Arduino. I have selected 6, 7 and 8. This is because pins 2, 3, 4 and 5 are used to transmit data to the LCD. A single jumper cable is required for each. So that's SPI data on the breakout board back to pin 6. SPI chip select to pin 7. And SPI clock to pin 8. But once again, you can choose any pins you like, you just have to define them in the program. Once you're done that, you can open the Arduino IDE. Open two examples here. The first is serial display found in the liquid crystal library, and the second is serial thermocouple found in the MAX31855 library. So in the thermocouples library is LCD thermocouple, which you can use as a shortcut if you prefer. I'm going to show you how to write your own script, taking bits from each example. Open a new sketch. We'll create our own sketch by taking the pre-setup and setup loops from each example. Go to the serial display example and copy the pre-setup configurations. This includes the library inclusions, the initialization of the library, and the declaration of the integers which will be used as the pin inputs. Now we can look at what needs to go into the setup loop. I like to separate and comment my code so I know what belongs to what. Back to the serial display example. We can take almost all the setup loop but don't need the serial begin at this time. This includes the begin function for the LCD, setting the cursor to the start and writing a default message to appear on startup. I usually also include a delay at the end of the setup loop. This allows the inner timings to synchronize. And that should be enough to get our LCD up and running. We can put that example to one side and let's have a look at the serial thermocouple example. So we repeat the same process, first taking the pre-setup, which includes the library inclusions and the instantiations. And it's always nice to remember to try and keep your code clean and organized in case somebody else needs to look at it or edit it. Once you have those copied across, don't forget your definitions, which defines the SPI pins, and your instantiation of the library object. We also need to change our pin definitions to 6, 7 and 8. That's 6 for data out, 7 for chip select, and 8 for clock. And that's our pre-setup complete. For the setup loop, we can copy everything, including the serial begin function. So you can copy that across to our new example sketch placing it in the setup loop. You can now edit the main loop. You can do this by going back to the serial thermocouple sketch. We can copy all the code from this section as it's all required. So we copy that over to our new sketch and what this part of the code does it reads the thermocouple values and serial prints them. So as you can see serial print internal temperature, serial print the actual read from the thermocouple. It checks to see if the thermocouple has any errors and if it doesn't it prints the value C before sleeping for 1000 milliseconds. From here we return to the LCD example. 
and down to the main loop we can copy and paste the clear screen functions which also set the cursor to the correct position and we can place those into our new script which I'm just going to tidy up a little bit returning to the LCD example from the main loop I'm going to copy the LCD write function which prints to the LCD and just change this to print temperature C for Celsius and then the value for temperature so it's LCD write and C the variable I'm also going to add an LCD write function uh, to the error loop so in the event of the sensor causing an error I want error or sensor error uh, to be printed on the LCD and that's it now we're ready to compile the sketch and download it to the Arduino and test it out so for the demonstration I have a cup of hot water uh, it was boiled a while ago so it's not 100 degrees it's been let cool down a little bit but should be quite hot and we can see the temperature rising immediately from once the thermocouple entered the water The reading is a little bit jumpy, but this is quite normal and can be fixed using an averager or a sliding window filter. Now I'm going to remove the thermocouple from the cup of warm water and insert it into a glass of cooler water. You can see the value decreases sharply with almost immediate effect. The measured reading seems to overshoot the actual reading, uh, but once again this can be removed with an averager or a sliding window filter. And that's it. Thanks for watching another video brought to you by Mishmash Labs. In our next video, we'll be using the same circuitry and code to control a high voltage relay switching on and off a light. If you like our videos, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Thanks for watching.